Hello, I'm Healthy Emmy, and organization is my love language. Well, organization and sweet potatoes. Today, I'm going to be showing you the exact system that I use to organize and plan my week. I'm going to break it down step by step so that you can use the same system to organize and plan your week. If you are new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. Make sure you subscribe. I upload a video three times a week now. So, <laughs> the grand old time. I have a disease called if it's not on my Google Calendar, it does not exist. My Google Calendar is my oxygen tank, it is my lifeline. It is my, my third love language, organization, sweet potatoes, Google Calendar. So I'm gonna be showing you how I do everything on Google Calendar and exactly how you can do it. If you don't wanna use Google Calendar, you do not have to. You could use a paper calendar if you wanted to. Everything that I'm gonna do here will apply to you doing your organization however you want to, uh, but I will say that using Google Calendar has been a lifesaver. And I'm gonna give an, a bo uh, an additional bonus tip for how you can actually integrate your Google Calendar with another app that makes to-do lists so easy. None of this is sponsored, by the way. That'd be pretty cool, but it's not. This is just me. First and foremost, let's keep this all to one calendar. Back in the day when I was a teacher, I used to be a teacher. Now I'm a business owner, but you can do this for whatever your lifestyle is. I would have all these separate calendars and planners. I would have my teacher planner. I'd have my personal planner. I would have my workout planner. Everything was all over the place. And I thought that that was a good thing because everything was nice and organized. When life is not like that. Life is not as compartmentalized. Life is spaghetti. Life is not a waffle where everything is in its nice little neat category. So I highly advise that you put everything in your life on one calendar and if you have a work calendar i know a lot of uh, companies will use things like outlook or they'll use google calendar share it with your personal google calendar so if your company has a company calendar share all the events with your personal calendar so that you can have everything all in one place that has been a game changer for me because it prevents me from overextending myself and over committing in all of these other areas of my life because I have tunnel vision on that one area and I'm not able to be realistic about all of the other areas and components of my life that I have to consider. So by putting everything on one calendar, you are much less likely to overcommit yourself. And when you try to do everything, you end up doing nothing. So I cannot emphasize enough the importance of just having one calendar. So I'm using Google Calendar and there's a little plug in here and this is totally optional, but you can download something called GCal Plus. And what it allows you to do is down here, you can actually change uh, what you can see on your calendar. So normally you'll be able to see from, you know, midnight to midnight and that will cause you to overcommit yourself because we are not awake from midnight to midnight. So I've set my Google Calendar so that it is only displaying the hours that I am awake, which is usually 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. That way, once again, I can prevent overcommitting myself. The first thing that you're going to want to do is a time audit for a full week. And what I mean by time audit is I want you to write down exactly what you are doing every moment of the day. So let's say we start on Sunday here and you wake up at 8 a.m. on Sunday and from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. you end up, you know, you shower and you get ready. I want you to write that down. If you're using Google Calendar, log in into Google Calendar. If you use a paper calendar, do it on a piece of paper. Do it on a napkin for crying out loud. Just do it. The first thing we have to do is a time audit to see where your time is going in the first place. The reason why is because we are gonna end up categorizing all of the things that you do. And this is the equivalent to us doing a crossword puzzle with a word bank versus us doing a crossword puzzle without a word bank. Which one is gonna be easier? The crossword puzzle with the word bank because you know what you're working with here versus if we try to build a calendar that just is a completely blank calendar, then the blank page syndrome is going to take over. You're gonna get so overwhelmed that you're not going to end up making your calendar and planning for the week because you're overwhelmed that there's nothing. Where do I even start? Let's start with a time audit. So you're gonna write down absolutely everything that you do. There should be no blank spaces on here. If you find that you're just scrolling on Instagram, then write scrolling on Instagram. 
you need to write down absolutely everything that you are doing. So let me give a little example here. Having dinner with my friends goes in the Google Calendar. Going to my parents goes to the calendar. Grocery shopping goes in the calendar. Everything goes in there. If you're a client of mine in the SOS program and food prep and grocery shopping are not in your calendar, honey, got to get it in there. Make it a priority. Mindset journal on Sundays in there. Live Q&A on Mondays. Group calls. Put it all in there. You are worth it. The next thing that we're going to do is once we filled out the entire week, you are going to categorize all of these tasks. We're going to find out what your quote unquote life pillars are. What are the categories of your life that you are denoting your different time to? So it would be kind of like if you had, you know, a word bank in your crossword puzzle and one category was flowers, the next category was movies, the next category was cities. We want to take everything that you're doing in your life and put it into the different categories. For me, I can tell you what my pillars are on my calendar. So my categories are calls, healthy ME, personal, trips, and breaks. I do think it is critical that you make one of your calendar categories breaks so that you can schedule in at least a half hour every day where you can decompress for a moment. Rest is productive, and if we are going to block out every single minute of our calendar, we can feel overwhelmed by, oh my goodness, I have so much to do. So if you schedule in a break, it will allow you to recharge. I know for me personally, I can struggle with feeling a little bit guilty when I'm taking a break. So if I know that I've scheduled it in and it is something that actually is productive to rest, everything in my life flows a lot more effortlessly. I find that for me personally, when it comes to categories, for me personally, less is more. So I have four to five categories. If you need more categories, that's just fine. So personal is everything from a doctor's appointment up to I'm going to my parents for dinner to a date night to book club. Everything that's going on with me personally, it all goes in the Google Calendar. Now that we have our categories, let's put them into the calendar. So I'm going to click this little plus here. Let's say I'm in the SOS program and I want a full calendar dedicated to the SOS program. I will click create new calendar and I'm going to name it SOS program because it's that important to me. All right, SOS program. I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call it personal. I'm going to create another one called work. And of course, you want to make a calendar called breaks. Okay, great. So now we've discovered what our categories are. Every single thing in your time audit should go into one of these categories. And the way that I do this on Google Calendar, or you can do this just with your physical calendar, is each category has a different color. This is the part that really excites me. And so what we're going to do here, if you are using Google Calendar, is we're going to go to Google and we're going to search up hex codes for you can do it by season or you can do it just by color. So if your favorite color is pink, search hex codes pink and then search images. And you're going to find all of these palettes that did that have different hex codes so that you can make the colors of your calendar reflect your favorite colors. So let's say that I really like this palette here. I actually do like this palette. It's very pretty. So now I can go to each calendar and I can choose the colors that I want to associate with it. So I'm going to click the three dots here and then I'm going to put in that hex code that I loved. So F, F, B, C, D, A. This is totally optional, by the way, but I just love this. F, F, B, C, D, A. And then I'm just going to choose hex codes for the rest of them. So let's see. F, F, D, 6, E, 9. And by the way, you don't have to do this. You could just, you could just choose. They have preset colors here, so you could just choose these if you wanted to. But I really love the hex codes just because they're so beautiful. So now you're going to go through each one of your time audited events and you're going to assign them to one of those categories. 
So the way that we do this on Google Calendar is we click each event and then you'll click the little pencil there on the left and then down on calendar, you're going to switch it to the calendar that you want it to be on. So I want shower and get ready to be personal and I will press save. I will also say that when you hit this pencil, if you can see up there, it says does not repeat. You can actually change that so you can have things recur daily, weekly, every Tuesday, whatever it is, so that you don't have to build this calendar every single week. You can just press that button and then it will repeat. So I'm going to go through my entire calendar here and I'm going to make sure that everything is in the right category. Okay, great. The next step is our weekly and daily recurring tasks. What are the things that you have to do every week? And how can we break that up into different days of the week? Write all of those down. And then once you've written down all the things that you have to do every week, I want you to choose on which day you are going to do each of those things. So on Mondays, I do this every single Monday. On Tuesdays, I do this every single Tuesday. Wednesdays, I do this every single Wednesday. Now we need to put those in your calendar. I'm going to put them under work because they're usually work things for me. Um, but on the weekends, I have my personal tasks and I'm going to label them by each day of the week. So I'm going to say here are my Monday tasks. I let's say I do my reset my spreadsheet. I read all my client mindset journals. I review all my client nutrition journals. And those are my Monday tasks, let's say. And I have to do those every single Monday. I'm going to make those recur every single Monday for every single day of the week for the weekly tasks that I need to do. Now, I personally, this is an optional step, but I use something called Todoist to do this. So I have this app here called Todoist. And as you can see, I have my Friday tasks, for example. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing okay, how much? <laughs> if you want to do supper, we're doing Mexi, whether you like it or not. And I bought, I bought extra peppers too. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, I might come over good. today. All right, everything else is cool. Can I give me, uh, any, if you have any information? That was my father. Okay, back to business. So. I have something called Todoist and I love the app Todoist. Again, this is not sponsored. It'd be cool if it is sponsoring, but Todoist integrates with Google Calendar, meaning that these two things speak to each other. So whatever I put on my Todoist, which is a to-do list, it will populate on my Google Calendar and whatever I put on my Google Calendar will populate on my Todoist. As you can see here, I have my Monday tasks that are listed, for example, and it allows me to check off what it is that I'm doing. So I personally put my recurring weekly tasks that we just talked about on my Todoist so that I can check them off as I do them every Monday, every Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I won't go too in depth on this. I can make this a separate video. Let me know in the comments if you want a video all about my Todoist. All right, so we've done our time audit, we've done our pillars with our calendars, and we've done our colors. So now it's time for you to set up, what do I want this to look like? So you have this big thing that's going on here, and now you have the opportunity to organize it in the way that you would like to. So the first thing that we want to do here on Google Calendar is we want to go through each of these and any ones first and foremost that you want to get rid of, delete. If you don't want to scroll on Instagram for an hour, delete it, free up that space so that you could fill that space with either a break, meditation, exercise, coming back to center, food prep, something that's more productive. Get rid of anything that you don't want. And then next, let's set up your ideal calendar. Move things around. Once you've chosen your ideal schedule, we wanna make sure that this is recurring weekly. To do this is very simple. When you click on a task, you'll hit the pencil here. And then it says does not repeat. You're actually going to want this to, re to recur weekly on and then whatever day you are currently on. And that way this will auto populate every week so that you don't have to remake this schedule every single week. It will just pop up every week indefinitely. So I'd press this and then I would press save. This is the simple system that I personally use. And I hope that it inspires you to discover what the categories and the pillars are of your life. 
color coordinate them and put them all on your Google Calendar or in your paper calendar to make sure that you have the time and space to get it all done. I can certainly do a video that goes in depth about how my Todoist integrates with my Google Calendar so you can see that I have everything on both of those. If you would like that, then I am happy to do it. Just leave a comment and let me know and let me know what you want the next video to be. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in my next one.